Okie dokie. In this problem, pay very close attention to what they're asking at the end. One asks, when will it finish draining? And one asks, at what time will it be completely full? You want to use two different methods, just slightly different methods for each of these problems. So I will try to demonstrate each of them with ease. All right. So in this one, liquid drains from a tank at this rate, meaning that it's leaving the tank, right? It's draining from the tank from the initial seven that are in there at time zero. And so if this is a rate of change describing the water leaving the tank, it's describing like a negative rate of change, right? So it's it's a negative rate of change because it's leaving the tank. Okay, um, so we are calling basically F prime negative five over T plus six. The process will be to take the antiderivative of this, but really the integral of this from time zero to some arbitrary time t, dt. And we'll start with that, and we'll have to incorporate the seven units when we uh, finish working out the integral here. So let's jump to it. Finding the antiderivative of negative 5 over t plus 6 first. So in the past, we, I think, have just, we could use u substitution, but we've really just jumped to using natural log of the denominator when it's just a denominator that's basically raised to the first power, or in other words, like the t is raised to the first power. And so when you have just a t plus 6 on the bottom, then you can just use ln of t plus 6 in the absolute value, and then negative 5 becomes the coefficient in this case. So we have negative 5 ln of t plus 6 in the absolute value evaluated from 0 to t. So we'll have negative 5 ln of t plus 6, assuming that t is a positive time value, which it should be, we can sort of drop the absolute value bar, so no need to worry about them here. And then we are subtracting what we get when we plug in 0. And so when we plug in 0 to t plus 6, we get 0 plus 6, which is really just 6. And so altogether, we have negative 5 ln of t plus 6 plus 5 ln of 6. And now what do we know? So this is the difference. This is the change in water from 0 to time t. And we know that the starting amount was 7. And we are trying to find... At what time will it finish draining? In other words, if it's starting at 7 units full of water, we want to know when this change from 0 to t will equal 7, or potentially negative 7. Because when will the change be negative 7? That means it will have lost 7 units. So we're going to try out negative 7 and see how we do. So... We're going to try to isolate this t. We're solving for t so we can find the time value when it completely loses those seven units of whatever's in, like liquid. I don't know. It doesn't even say water. So we'll just call it liquid. So the first thing we will do is subtract 5 ln of 6 to the right side. And let's go ahead and get a decimal for that. Whoops, let's do this. So we'll do negative 7 minus 5 ln of 6. And that gives us negative 15.96. And then on the left side, negative 5 ln of t plus 6. So now to get closer to isolating t, we want to divide by negative 5. Let's give ourselves some room here. 
So we are dividing by negative 5. And we will get ln of t plus 6 equals... Three point one nine. Now, to eliminate a natural log in any equation, we want to make e the base of both sides because e raised to the natural log will cancel and just leave us with t plus six. So we have e to the three point one nine, and we have twenty four point two nine, and then to get t by itself, we subtract by 6, giving us 18.29. Please be an answer. 18.3, thank goodness. All right. So that's the example for at what time will it finish draining. The negatives we had to uh, come up with on our own were on the rate because it was draining. It was a draining rate from the tank, right? And then we had to tack on a negative to the 7 because we were f trying to find when the change of the water in the tank uh, from 0 to T was negative 7. We needed to know at what time would it lose 7 units because that w that is when it would have finished draining out. All right, let's try one more example doing sort of the opposite in some cases. So switching gears here, they tell us that liquid is draining into a tank. That's a pretty terrible way to say that. It's not like that. It's just it's going into a tank right at this rate. So this is a positive rate. It's the rate that is being added to the tank. So no need to tack on a negative. They say if the tank is empty at the start but can hold four units, when will it be completely full? And I want to say this example is probably the easier one. I don't think you have to worry about tacking on negatives. So let's see what we can do here. We're still integrating from 0 to some time t. We're trying to find the t value when it fills up to 4 units. So we are integrating 10e to the negative 2t dt. The antiderivative of uh, e to anything is that same e term and then whatever the coefficient of the t term is within the exponent we will divide by that number so it's e to the negative 2t over negative 2 and the 10 is the coefficient that will always just stay out in front so anytime you have a coefficient in front of e just go ahead and leave it out in front 10 divided by negative 2 is 5, sorry, negative 5 e to the negative 2. We are evaluating this from 0 to t, meaning we plug t in first. So really just the same expression, negative 5 e to the negative 2t, then we are subtracting what we get when we plug in 0. And so this integral from 0 to t represents the change in water or the change in liquid from zero to t and what we want is for this change from zero to t to be a positive four we're trying to find out where this change from start to t is equal to four because that will be when it is completely full because it can hold four units so now our goal is still to solve for this t up here. So the first thing we could do is because it's a double negative again, we have a basically a plus 5e to the negative 2 times 0. Negative 2 times 0 is just 0. And then e to the 0 is just 1. And then 5 times 1 is 5. So lots of simplifying to tell us that we subtract 5 to the right side. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. We divide by negative 5 to get the e by itself to give us positive 1 fifth on this side. Negative 1 over a negative 5 is a positive 1 over 5. And then just the opposite of the rule we used in the last one. To eliminate e, we actually take the natural log of both sides, eliminating that, leaving us with just negative 2t equals the natural log of one-fifth, 
and then dividing both sides by negative 2 should do the trick. ln of 1 fifth should be a negative value, which means when we divide by negative 2, we get 0.8 approximately. 0 0.8 for the time, and that is an answer. When we break out the eraser, we see it is our correct answer. I hope all these justifications and steps made sense with the different versions. If you have any questions on these problems, please let me know. Hope this helps.